Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. So we have f of x plus y equals f of x divided by 1 plus y times f of x. And we're going to try to find a function that satisfies this equation. Now, with functional equations, there aren't really any particularly set methods, even though there are some ideas that you can use. Obviously, continuity plays a role. If it's injective or surjective, you know, uh, stuff like that, or differentiability, you know, there's a lot of things you can consider. And what is the domain and range of the function also, right? Those are important things because there are certain values that you can't obtain or attain, or there is certain x values that you can't use, which is part of the domain. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. Typical approaches is replacing x and y with certain values. But again, like I said earlier, you gotta be very careful. For example, you would not wanna make the denominator zero. But let's go ahead and try some uh, pretty common values, such as what would happen if you replace y with zero, right? Would that give us a solution? Let's find out. If you replace y with 0, you would be getting f of x plus 0, which is f of x, equals f of x. By the way, when you replace y with 0, you're not replacing x with anything, or you can say, hey, keep it as is. And here, because y is replaced with 0, the whole thing disappears. I mean, just that part. And now we are, end up with 1 plus 0, which is 1. <laughs> Great, right? We got a what is it called? Tautology, something like that, which is something which is always true. f of x equals f of x. This didn't really help, but that's okay. You just got to keep track. Do you think anything would change if you replace x with 0 instead? Yes, because we don't really have that type of symmetry here. As you can see, you can just replace x with y and y with x. Uh, well, you can and you can't. We'll, we'll get to that. But let's go ahead and see if what happens if we replace x with 0. Then we get f of y plus 0, which is f of y, equals f of x, which is f of 0, divided by 1 plus y times f of 0. Now, f of, what is f of 0? Well, f of 0 is a constant. So you can basically go ahead and replace f of 0 with something like c, and then plug it in here and see what happens. Now, here's what I'd like to do. This may or may not work, and we'll get to that, okay? We'll get back to this. But before we do, I want to show you an alternative approach, which actually works nicely in this case. So let's go ahead and call this maybe the first method or second method. Okay, let's call this second, and this would be considered the first method. And then, like I said earlier, we'll get back to it. So what is f of x plus y? It is f of x divided by 1 plus y times f of x. Nice. So when you have two variables, it's nice because you have more freedom. You can basically replace x and y with anything you want. For example, you could replace y with negative x, and that would give you f of 0. Again, that is going to be a constant, right? But I don't want to do that. I want to use something entirely different, which I think is mind-blowing. I've seen this type of solution in one of the problems that was more complicated than this, but I took part of the solution, kind of simplified the process, broke it down for you guys, and this is what came out of that effort. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and replace x with y and y with x. That's kind of interesting. Now, why would you do that? Of course, there's a good reason. Now, when you do it, you kind of need to do it at the same time so you're not confused. So x will be y, y will be x. So this is going to be f of y plus x. And the numerator will be f of y, remember, 1 plus, and 1 is constant, so it's unchanged. y is x, and x is y. Here we go. Beautiful. Now, what is the significant about this is that x plus y, and I'm going to erase this part here so you can see better. So here's what it is. x plus y and y plus x from the commutativity property of addition basic property, but important in this case, they're equal. Awesome. So the left-hand sides are equal. If two things are equal to the same thing, what does that mean? Then they're equal. Awesome. This is amazing, I think. So these two things are equal. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. f of x divided by 1 plus y times f of x equals f of y 
over 1 plus x times f of y. Now, you might be questioning, like, why on earth would you do something like that? Because what does this mean? This just means that x and y behave the same way, sort of. Yes and no. I mean, there's more to it than you can see here because we're about to do something unbelievable. I mean, I'm excited about these things when I see these things like this is crazy. And there's a lot of crazy things in math. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to flip both sides. So we're going to get something nicer. And the reason behind that is I want to be able to split these fractions into two pieces. So whenever you add two fractions like A over C and B over C, you get A plus B over C, right? Obviously, if they have the same denominator. If not, then you can make one. But when you have a sum, like a single fraction, you can also split it up into two pieces. And we do use that technique a lot with polynomials, with long division, so many other areas. So you need to know this. So from here, we get 1 over f of x plus y f of x divided by f of x. This is the very reason we did that. Equals 1 over f of y plus x f of y over f of y. Nice. Now here's what happens. Of course, f of x should not be zero, right? We're gonna go ahead and cancel these out and f of y for the same reason. And we get something amazing. I mean, I can't emphasize this enough because you're about to see a little bit of hocus pocus or method magic. Ready? Now we're gonna go ahead and put the x terms on one side and y terms on the other side. So we're gonna subtract x and subtract y from both sides. And this is what we're gonna get. Now, why is this amazing? Why am I like, am I exaggerating? No, not really, actually. This is amazing because you do see a function of x, a function of x on the left-hand side. And when I say a function of x, a function of x only. There is no other variable in this, right? And remember the original problem. And this is a function of y only, right? So we have to add for emphasis maybe the word only. Now, what does that mean? Well, how can a function of y only be equal to a function of x only? They are different variables, right? I mean, they can be. They don't have to be, but we can choose them to be different. So that can only be possible if they're both equal to a constant. Guess what? A constant is also a function. Beautiful. Now, why is this beautiful? Let me tell you. From a single equation, you get a system of equations. That's what's really cool about it. And we use this technique with partial differential equations too, which I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit, and I got a lot of positive feedback regarding uh, partial differential equations, which is something that I'm new to, by the way. I've never taken a course. I just started, started reading some stuff, and that's really exciting. Anyways, let me know what you think. From here, we get the following. Let's do the first one, f of x. Okay, set is equal to c, and from here, you can write 1 over f of x as x plus c, and this implies f of x equals 1 over x plus c. If you do the same thing with y, you're going to realize you get the exact same thing. So you don't really need to do it, like we don't have to reinvent the wheel because we already have it. So this is going to be our function. What is c though? c is a constant. Therefore, the only value x cannot be is negative c. For example, if c is 1, f of x equals 1 over x plus 1 is a solution, and this domain should ex exclude negative 1. If c is 0, f of x equals 1 over x is a solution. Again, and this time, you would exclude 0. Depends, right? But that's a general solution. c is a real number. Can it be a complex number? Probably. You go ahead and check it out. Now, after this long second method, <laughs> I want to talk about the first method. This wasn't something that I planned initially, by the way, but I realized that this might work. So let's go ahead and pick it up from here. If you replace f of 0 with c, you get f of y equals c over 1 plus yc. Okay, you're like, y, c, right? Great. So this kind of gives you a solution, doesn't it? Because if you replace y with x, I mean, it doesn't matter which variable you use, but we are used to writing it like this, and this, I think, represents a solution. But why is that different from what we found, right? We found 1 over x plus c, but this one is c over 1 plus c. Let me tell you. Should I tell you? Maybe you can find out, but anyways, I'm, I just feel like telling you. Divide the numerator and denominator by c. You're going to get 1 over, ready, x plus 1 over c. 
And if you set one over C equal to another constant like K, you're gonna get the exact same solution. Of course, C, K, it doesn't matter whichever variable you pick, it's just gonna turn out to be the same. Therefore, this is a valid solution as well. Of course, you don't want C to be zero and you don't want one over C to be zero either, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.